Hey YouTube, how's it going? Retro Dave back with another video. And um, in this video, we are going to be upgrading the original Nintendo power supply, linear power supply, to a modern switching power supply. So we've got a Suzo hat one. And the reason we're doing this is uh, obviously the original power supply is coming up for 40 years old. And um, although it works perfectly at the moment, um, obviously if this fails, if this goes down, it's likely to take my board with it. And um, being in the UK, sourcing another board is um, not an easy task. And um, I could it's basically a bit of a future preventative maintenance, really. So yeah, I've never done this before on a Nintendo game, so we're gonna be doing it together. Um, although I have got a rough idea of what I'm doing. Um, so basically what I've done is I've ordered these switching power supplies. So they were decent. Decent make as soon as I have. I've got bought on these before. Um, I don't want to risk buying the cheap Chinese ones you can get off eBay um, and risk damaging my game, it's not worth it. I'd rather spend a bit extra money and get a decent one. So they're selectable 230 volt, 215 volt by a jumper here. You can just about see in there, it's already on the 115. That's how it came to me. So I'm not um, changing the voltage on this machine from a um, to 240 and these are 100, 120 volt American um, standard I'm not changing that all we're doing is we're going to take out this power supply put this one in I'm going to show you how to do it um, we'll learn together so what I've done is I've gone to highscoresaves.com and this is where I got the high score save kit as well which is just there um, so I went back and ordered the part for the power supply swap and that is this little daughter board here or jumper board so what it basically does it means we can remove we can remove the original connectors on the power supply we haven't got to cut any wires and we can put them on here on these two and um, yeah without chopping the wires up and making a mess we use this little board to get us out of trouble and as you can see it's got the 5 volt ground ground minus 512 and as you'll be able to see on here plus 5 ground ground minus 512 so obviously you need to make sure that the power supply you buy matches this this uh, pin out like this so what we do is you can see we unscrew them screws you slot that in and obviously there is a right and a wrong way around now if you just see on on the image here you've got this little jump bit there and this rounded corner on these connectors it's the same thing if I pull these off you're not going to be actually I'm not going to take the camera off the tripod but trust me there's a um, there's a rounded edge on this top corner here and also you've got this lump at the top which corresponds with the the little lump on the top of uh, on here so it was going that way and that should be good to go now obviously what we've got to do is we need to see this is a wire I've added on this is just my own field ground um, so I've actually made this myself just to put onto the um, incoming mains ground just so we've got a definite um, ground to the mains um, there is a ground here already which is on this bolt here what I intend to do is put that on here on the casing and ground it to the casing so I'm going to put that on there, we're going to put a field ground on to the mains and then I've got some, I've made, just made this just now before I start the video, got a 12 volt um, indicator or a stop light out of my car, I stuck two wires on it, obviously with polarity of positive and negative and this is so we can test the power supply and have it un, under load um, so we can obviously check the, the voltages before we stick the board on obviously because I don't know we don't know how this has been set um, if it's too high and I plug it straight in we could fry the board if we haven't got anywhere so we're basically going to do that first we get the power connected up um, and to do that they supply these so in this kit if I now I've bought two of these kits there's obviously two wires too many for this one I've got one for my junior as well so in this kit when you buy you get this little board and you get a couple of wires 
because what you need to do is you need to connect so you can imagine you've got this set here like that you've got your field ground which is optional if you you know I'm not saying you have to do that but I'm doing it just my own peace of mind then you've got the AC in so what you need to do is you need to connect up these two to the AC so the original power supply has got this connector around the back which goes in the back here um, which comes from this side of the transformer but what we're actually doing is we're going from AC from the wall um, jumping off of these and going to our power supply that's the only way we're going to be able to connect it up so it's that way we're not hacking up the original wiring I'm not cutting any connectors off I'm not you know um, yeah I'm basically not ruining it I'm just keeping it original I'm not chopping the wires around and cutting the plugs off because there's every risk you're gonna you know have a dodgy connection or something and I want to keep it in good nick so I mean you don't have to fork out for these boards they're not they're not um, they're not expensive anyway if you want to cut your connectors about and do that that's fine but I want to keep it nice and simple and um, so that's what we're gonna do right enough chatting let's um so I've already undone half undone this anyway so you undo your little um, uh, nuts off the top of the power supply take your earth off lift your power supply out so put that to one side I'll stick that in in the game for now get it out of my way okay so what I want to do first is I want to just basically hook this up to the mains and put my light, my 12 volt light on it so I've got the voltage right before I put my little daughter board on so what we're going to do we're just going to plonk this in So we'll connect up the AC, so one goes to zero volt and one's going to 120 volt. So you pull this little cover off the top, like that. Fill it screwdriver. And we're basically just gonna piggyback the um, original connections. And these instructions are supplied when you buy the kit is online, you just basically just download it onto your iBooks or whatever as a PDF. So I'm just gonna try and get that to go in there with the original one. Appreciate it's gonna be difficult for you guys to see. But I'm literally just undoing a screw. one and that's going to go over here obviously being AC it doesn't matter which way around you put these because it's alternating current anyway so I'm just going to put this in like haphazardly for now just to set the voltage obviously I will fix this down this is just purely to get the voltage um, adjusted before we start the fill ground by the um, switch on the back of the cabinet so this is from the mains not sure if you can see that and we've got that one and then we've got the new one like so so what we're going to do is screw that back in so what I've done there's a screw just down here I'll probably show you after the main part of the video um, so I'll just get this and I'll tie this up in a minute so We've got our zero volts here. So now we're gonna jump with the 120. So we'll use a bit with a bit of sold on it. So let's go. Screwed in, yep. Just make sure it's nice and firm. Yep, that's okay. So this is our another one. It goes here. 
So we're literally just gonna get the voltage adjusted. That's all we're doing right now. And then I'll disconnect this again. So this can go back on the cover because we've done this part. So that is done, that side. So 120 volt, zero volt, all we've done is it gone on top of the existing connectors from your mains here, so you can't go wrong, right? We've got our ground, we've got our AC in, and now what we're gonna do, and I've never actually I've never actually done this before, so this is gonna be new for me too. So we're gonna put on, obviously the polarity does matter, this marked up, which is negative, which is positive here. And it's a 12 volt bulb, but we're gonna be adjusting the five volts. So I'm gonna stick it across the five volt um, for the time being. It'll be dim, but it will do something. And this is just so we can get a load on it and adjust the... Okay. So it's five and then a ground next to it. So, okay, so we've got a bulb on a positive on the plus five, the negative on the ground. We've got our AC in and our ground to mains. So in theory, this should light up. Obviously, being five volt, um, it's not going to be very bright. But we just want to have a bit of a load on there so I can adjust my five volts. So, got the multimeter here, set to twenty volts DC. So we turn that on. So let's just rest that there, like so. So now we can plug her in. We should have something going on. So nothing else is going to be powered on. Uh, just double check ground, yeah, AC, and that. So it's fire on the power supply. So as you can see, the the bulb is on. And the, I can hear the marquee lights just come on as well. The marquee light is still connected. Okay, so, ground, positive. So it's 5.13, can you see that on the screen? So all we're gonna do now is just turn that down a tad. There you go. Bang on five. 4.995 so we'll just tweak that slightly I'll get the screwdriver to do that now what I did do before I disconnected the original power supply is I noted that um, on the board here um, at uh, F1 um, the first leg on this chip was at 4.99 volts so that's what I'm aiming for so what we're going to do is I'm going to try and do this as best I can. So I mean it is literally bang on. But I'm just going to try and tweak this. So that's going down. There we go. Just enough to keep it stable. So that is exactly five volts, but when we put the board under load, it all go down slightly. I'd rather it was slightly low than slightly high, and we can then adjust it up. Okay, so that is that. So we can turn that off now. And know that we've got the board set at a safe five volts. It's not too high. So we'll put that to one side for a minute. So now we're gonna unplug it, just to be absolutely sure what's going on so now we can unplug our light because we're done with that um, just for the time being I'm going to unplug our AC and our ground just so I can put the connector the connector on the adapter board sorry so let's just remove that put that to one side this is just so I can fit our adapter board on. Okay, 
So our adapter board is on, as you can see. The field ground is just missing here, I've just unscrewed that, and the AC at the bottom, okay? So that is on. I mean, it literally just rests on the end of those little connectors. Um, so yeah, it's a really cool little device that. I'm really happy with that. Okay, so we don't need this yellow one anymore. So we've tucked that out of the way because that is not going to be needed. Because we're not needing that from the original transformer now. So I'm going to connect my um, ground cable here to the back of the power supply just to be extra safe. So we can do that like so. In fact, I'll just undo this. Give me a bit of slack like that. So that's going to go there. Because this is how the other one was grounded, the other power supply was grounded on the outside of the case. So I'm just doing the same thing um, with the new power supply. So we're not altering anything. That's how the old one was connected up. So we're just doing the same. But I'm just screwing it in obviously a slightly different location. Let's just want that up out of my way like that. So that's on. So now, fortunately, you've got this bit of plywood here, and there's another bit at the bottom. You can hook the, you can actually hook the power supply um, feet into that, and then plonk this bit of plywood over the top of the um, of the existing one. If I can just get that on there, that should should fit. And then, like that, that's it. So that's just pulled over there, pull it back. Obviously, it's not a completely flat surface, but what I'm gonna do now is I'll put the bolts back on, and that'll hold that in place. Um, so these are the, the nuts that came off of these threaded bolts here. It just, it just means I can just reuse the same, the same bolts, and just to hold the power supply in place. Don't need to drill any extra holes or mess around, it's minimal. You don't need a power drill. Just basic, a basic, um, I think it's a seven mil spanner and um, Phillips screwdriver for this. So let me just go and grab my spanner. Do that up. Yep, just need a seven mil spanner. And a screwdriver. It's just a bit of a, a bit of a thread there, so I'll just get past that. So it's easy to spin on. Okay, no. So we're just nipping this on so the power supply is secured and not gonna be um, able to fall over if you need to move the cabinet around. Just nip it up, we don't need to go too mad, we don't need to damage the wood or anything like that. Just to stop it falling over. So I don't need to, I'm not going to do them up really tight, I'm just doing it to hold that piece of plywood on. just to secure that power supply enough that if I need to move the cab around or tip it up, it's not gonna fall out. So that, that's enough, that's on there, okay? Right. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna put our AC wires back on again. So that's these, these two here, run these round back like so and screw those in now I haven't got my monitors um, available so I'm not able to actually put the game on and show you it working but as long as the voltages are correct there's no reason why it won't okay so there's the AC 
connected in there, like so. You probably clip that in there if you want it to be really hardcore. So there's our field ground. As you can see, it's just long enough to go in there. So all I've got to do now is connect up these two plugs. So I'm going to have to just unhook this from the bottom of the game. So these are the original connectors now. I'll be able to show you what we're talking about. So there's that little rounded edge just there. And there's obviously the catch from the original power supply. So one of these is a nine pin and one of these is a 10 pin if you've got a Donkey Kong. It's going to be the same. So all we're basically using is this top row here. And it says Popeye only for the bottom row. So this is for Popeye as well. But we're only gonna need these top two. Um, so we're just gonna make sure which one's which. So this is the 10 pin in my hand now. And the 10 pin is this side. We have got the notch in the top left corner, notch in the top left corner. So we're just gonna put that on there like so. Gonna put that on carefully like that. Just gonna make sure that's on. Yep. Just gonna make sure that is definitely on there. That's it. So this is our little nine pin. Again, the notch is there in that top corner, going to that corner. So that is it. That is all connected up. So we can just tidy these wires up. So in theory, guys, that is um, that is it. Yeah, let's fire it up, and then we'll get the voltages of the board correct. Okay. Okay. So let's um, turn this on, and then we're going to check the check the voltages. Okay, so we've got the game turned on. We're now going to check the five volts at the board. So this is our ground. And we'll go back over to our uh, 1F. And that is 4.91. So it's just a little bit under. Um, so I'm just going to... We have to turn this up ever so slightly. Okay, well, so we've got no video to see the game working, but the purpose of this really is just to make sure that um, it's 4.98 right so it's 5.07 so if I go back over to our board five look exactly five volts so that's how we want it. So that is it. That is um that is all finished. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I shall catch you in soon for the next one.